recording this right all sorted right how to run dynamic marketing campaigns are free how many of you are attracted to the last word there for free don't we we always have that try and get people do things for free so we're going to um get we'll get to that point eventually i'll just ramble on for a little while so how to run your marketing campaigns for free you do, for those of you who are familiar we've got the chat line we are recording you get the slides you can say something nice about me on social media if there's anything not very really nice i'll delete it and uh, you can always said there's opportunities for a little bit one-to-one -one help if you leave that and that's all paid for by our by our learned friends at the whole council so all about how to run dynamic marketing campaigns for free there we go right we got a quiz though a quiz today go on get your pens out quiz today is all about slogans marketing slogans taglines no less so it does exactly what it says on the tin who which which organization was that yeah dawn dawn's on it straight away it was it was well known come on that's one of the most well known it's become part of our lexicon hasn't it of the english language <laughs> So there we go. Oh, there it is. There it does exactly what it says on the tin. Right. Just do it. Which um, which company? Oh, a bit easy, aren't they today? Part, yeah, a bit easy today. Right. Okay, don't worry. You won't get them all right. Nobody ever does. There we are. Nike. Nike. Okay, then. Getting a bit tougher now. Think different. With whom do we associate those words? Think different. Oh, Sal, you can't get to. Not only she know uh, what the derivation of the word flambra comes from, she knows there. Yeah. Apple. Hey, quick, are we allowed to go off at a tangent? I think we are. Does anyone know what, what, why, why uh, the um, lo logo is shaped by that? Oh, that's going to be a hard one to put on the chat line. Oh, so I'm going to have a go at that. Just a bit of a sidewall, you know. There's, there's lots of talk about that. Oh, we have, oh, there's always somebody to separate it from another company. True. Um, the little the the Apple logo had a little bite out of it and a leaf to separate it out, as I understand, from a cherry, because uh, an apple and a cherry are almost identical in shape. They are. There's lots of other reasons. And I'm sure if you see the film Steve Jobs, there's an answer to there. Smooth. Better move on. Right, come on then. Number four in our quiz, because you're worth it. Ha ha. Who's on the chat line with that one? Oh. Now, I don't want to sound, this is, this is it, you see. I, I don't, do, you mind, do you mind me being a little bit controversial? I knew the ladies here. I knew the ladies would get this. And yeah, look at that. You've got all, you've got all, you've got it all, haven't you? Yeah, all the products. Right, go on then. This is, this is, come on, easy today, isn't it? Easy, yeah. Easy today. We're all on this one. Tesco's. Now, for a little bonus point, does anyone know the, where, the, where, the, where the company name was derived from? Oh, come on. We have a little side, little side question there. Anyone want to know where it came from? Oh, goodness, I tell you what, you, you know, you tell if anyone's looking for anybody to go on the pub quiz, get Sal on it. The wife of the owner, wasn't it? Tessa Cohen, I believe. There we go. Okay, next on the slogans. I can't, shall I do my best German impression? Shall I do it? Have a go. Have a go. What's, hold on. I can't do it. Can't do it now. I'm going to giggle in a minute. Vorsprung. No, I tell you what, I'm not really good at accents. Vorsprung Dirk Technique. Yes, there we go. And it was Audi. Now, come on then, smarty pants. Anybody going to tell me what that actually... No, don't, don't Google this one. What that literally translates as. You've got five seconds to type it in. Because I'll know if you Google the answer. Oh, tell you what, that's a bit untrusty, isn't it? I'll know what you're thinking. Anyone know what Vorsprung Dirk Technique means? What it literally tried? Oh no, come on, Sal. Don't tell me he's got this one. Oh, Tory and oh, 
yes. I mean, should we give you, uh, oh, Jeremy, Jeremy Paxson wouldn't give you the answer to that one. It literally translates as <laughs> advancement through technology. So sorry to half a point. I'm no tough in it. Right, come on then. What next one? I'm loving it. Oh, you mean not just the webinar? <laughs> yeah, it's Ronald, isn't it? There he is, Ronald. Right, the happiest place on earth. Which slogan do you associate that with? Well, any takers here? I think quite a few people have uh, uh, some. No, I'm sorry. Uh, that there it is. The ha there's the happiest place on earth. I have to say that. I mean, it's part. It's part of my. Uh, it's part of my contract. Um, uh, yeah, no, it isn't Disneyland. Yeah, the happiest place on earth, Disneyland, Anaheim, California. Yeah, quick, quick tribute here to Sean Connery. What slogan? Who do you? Which company do you associate? A diamond is forever. Oh, oh, we've got him. Sal's got one wrong. Get in there. You got one wrong. Oh, there's a first for everything. There's a first for everything. De Beers. De Beers. Oh, what a shame. Right, getting towards the end of this now. Snap, crackle, and pop. For the user, for those of you of a certain age group, will know that one. Oh yes, you can't beat them. It was onomatopoeic. I said that word yesterday. Kellogg's snap, crackle, and pop. And last, I think, got different look, got different uh, PowerPoint slide here. Belong anywhere. Who's going to have a go at that one? What does belong? Who does belong? Any? Oh, it was always oh, somebody. GoPro says Dawn. Not quite. Uh, I'm gonna have to take your final answer. And belong anywhere belongs to Airbnb. Well, hey. So there we go. That was the end of today's quiz. Oh no, there was one more. There's one more. I forgot. I was having so much fun this morning. I was putting this together. I forgot. I couldn't count. Let's go places, Thompsons. <laughs> Let's go. Let's there's, there's, there's a bit of there's a there's a prize for irony as well. You know, if anyone wants to put any light suggestions in there, Let's go places is a is a slogan for Toyota. Toyota. There we go. Right. So let's move swiftly along. Have a little drink. <clears throat> Why is that on the screen? Oh, I don't know. Well, there's a company who changed its um, bottle, the shape of the bottle, and have never looked back since. So sometimes running marketing campaigns can be relative to actually the change of shape of the product. That wasn't for free, though. Right, so let's talk all about campaigns. So, first of all, you need a goal. Now, there are four famous goals on the screen. Quick poll. Which one do you think is the most for football fans here? Famous goals. They are got Michael Owen scoring against Argentina, Zidane for the Champions League final, Solskjaer there with the last minute goal for the Champions League. Yes, but the, probably the one remember the most is the one on the bottom left, probably for the wrong reasons. So, Quick football aside, the hand of God, yes. There we go. Anyway, so quick little poll there. Sometimes it's what you remember for the wrong reasons. But so the, the, the real thing here, to start with this, before we go into some examples of campaigns, the first thing I would say to each and every one of you, when you're running a campaign, what is the purpose and goal of your campaign? I'll give you some examples here. You may be wishing to promote a new product or service. You may, your sole aim may be to increase brand awareness, either then potentially to 
gather customer feedback content, generate purely revenue, so it could be just a simple sales message, to boost your engagement from your audience, to advertise an upcoming event. And I think you'll find they are the key six goals of your campaign. Now, some will, naturally there will be like a Venn diagram. There may be some crossover, but it's really useful before you set out and do anything to think what the primary purpose of your campaign is. Now, on the back of that then, is to measure the success of each of these campaigns. And I'll give you the measures associated with each of those. So you're promoting a new product or service, the answers may be then the pre-orders, actually any sales or any upselling or cross-selling. Brand awareness, there'll be mentions on social media, sentiment, feedback, again, social mentions, engagement, revenue, might be very simple, leads, down notes, upselling. And for boost engagement, it may be blog shares, social, God, I'd say it, social shares. And for advertising, ticket sales, booking, social. So I would really encourage you, blank sheet of paper, what is the goal? What is the measurement? I wouldn't even start unless I got those two things in place. Because as I've always mentioned, that I always think of marketing very much as a science. And so you want to measure what you're doing. So six six potential goals and measurements for each one. Yeah, so that's the starting point. And really the next thing, you never can tell um, with this particular image what I'm gonna talk about, even, even though you may be making overtures. So, you know, back to the days here, thinking really carefully about who your target audience is. I wonder where the second arrow went. Can see the lad quivering. So now this is thinking very much about your target audience. You've got you've got a goal, you've got a measurement. So who are your target audience? You should hopefully know that. And then asking yourself these questions: What are your audience's general interests? What do they what do they read or watch? So you're looking for clients' behaviour bit of American this where do my audience hang out online so I'll be on Instagram Facebook where are they what content is likely to get their attention is it a straight message or to do something witty humorous or what do they consume and finally addressing what problems do they have your product service can solve so you've got your goals, your measurements, and then you've got to know a little bit more about your target because we're going to come on to what to do in terms of where to post. So you've now got the burn of an idea. And I think one of the greatest challenges for small businesses is to how to make the idea come into reality. And I put this campaign up very familiar one to, to, to those of this is often on billboards and on TV and elsewhere. I thought it was a great example of Dove there in, in, in trying to think about their product being suitable for everybody, all shapes and sizes. It, it created real, real empathy with its audience. So it's probably well targeted and maybe the, the, the potential audience could visualize themselves as a potential customer. So it's very, very powerful. They think of taking a leaf out of their book or about others and things like that. There's also an element of humor and suggestivity without being going over the, um, over the line. So question really now, is how do you make your sort of idea, your little light bulb in your head, bring it to reality? So you've got a number of options. You can have a go yourself, DIY content. I've often signposted the likes of Canva 
as a great graphic design tool if you're creating content online. So you can use Canva, but all, and I've shown this slide a number of times, just a simple example, Chewy had used here, create rather than just put text up there, they're actually talking about social distancing for dogs, but the, the, it's much more developed in terms of its appearance. So the likes of Canva, but I don't want to be Canva to be considered to be the panacea of graphic design. And there are numerous other free tools out there. And I've just put up on the screen, as so you get a copy of the slides, five others that you can potentially use, whichever ones you're most familiar with. Now, the second thing you've got the option to do is to actually use a local designer. So, especially if you're creating print or direct mail, the days are probably going online. You can do, do it by going online. There's various different places uh, to go for that, but I think probably to go towards local design for print or direct mail. Now, we're going to go off a little bit of tangent here because the question often asked in the crops, actually, ironically, yesterday is direct mail dead? Right, I'm going to pause for a moment, have a little sip of my coffee, and I'm going to ask you just a simple thing, yes or no, do you think direct mail is dead? Ooh. Well, <laughs> one says no, one says yes, are two Depends on the audience. Great answer, Helen. Yes, says Tory. Tony, forgive me. No, if you can get it to the right person. So we have in the, depends on the age and demographic, depends on what you're trying to sell. Fantastic answers. The answer, I think you're all right in a lot of ways. I think it's quite difficult, but I do feel it is very much talk about 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 your knowing who your audience is and whom you are trying to target. Isn't it wonderful sometimes to come downstairs? I do it all the time. Every time the postman comes to the door, puts something through the door, I, I rush past the butler and the gamekeeper and the maids and get to the door, you know, and I'm dying to see what, um, what's, what's arrived. I don't know if you have the same, um, the same feeling. So, you know, getting, getting a letter, especially if it's a love letter, you know, um, you know remember when days when we used to get those? What do you mean I've never had any? It's quite. Uh, so, right, direct mail dead. Um, here we go. These are wise words. Yeah. Oh, sure. Giving, receiving, and handling tangible objects remain deep and intuitive parts of the human experience. Don't we all love to get something and open it? Now, the thing about direct mail over virtually any other ooh, controversial statement virtually any other form of marketing is that it can appeal to all the senses in some way shape or form and this idea that you actually are creating something which is permanent but also can appeal to the senses and so the issue about when please mr postman come through the door what have you got me is a question that I would think you want to address. Answer the question is, it does depend on your audience, but it also needs to be followed up. But if you are a consumer-based business, say a restaurant, you'd be putting menus through people's doors. People, I've, I've seen it read with gardening organizations, putting things through the door because they're talking to consumers with a garden. So I wouldn't rule it out completely. It is about experimentation. So that was a little bit about direct mail, a little bit tangent. So design, so you can use DIY, you can use local designers, especially or freelancers. I have referenced this before. There are sites such as Fiverr and People Per Hour where you can put a project on there and you can get businesses to bid for it. So if you would like marketing campaigns creating, created at fairly low cost, you can get them done for example i had a video created for me it cost me the princely sum of 20 pounds and so it's done by a freelancer 
here. So worth experimenting with, driven by reviews, you can, and, and a great way of doing it. A lot of it is offshore in the Philippines, Indonesia, wherever it might be, but certainly worth looking at for people to actually create your content for you. DIY, locals, uh, or freelancers. Now, the one thing I probably would advise you to invest in uh, is to think carefully, if you're going to have images taken, is to think about using a ph local photographer. So I'd think very much about using a local photographer, creating, you know, particularly for things like maybe your profile on Facebook, LinkedIn, or product shots. I think there's a lot to be said for going to a local photographer. So, now, here's the acid question. How will you reach your audience? Now, the way I look at this is to think about what you want to say and what they're interested in and think all the time about trying to make it relevant. And the other thing I would strongly advise to do is to think about test marketing something. So for example, classically, if you, whatever it might be, to think that you may want to run it by people, if you're doing email marketing, to send it out to a handful of people, just to gauge interest. Even send it to a customer to get some feedback on what it means to them. Okay, so how and when will you publish your marketing campaign? Key thing here I would really advise you to do is to build a campaign calendar. Sit there, pen and paper on, or pen and paper, more better, pen and calendar be more helpful, and to build your campaign calendar. We know what's happening in the world, and I'm going to give you a little example. Because if you look at what's lying ahead next month, these things are in place that you may wish to take advantage of. And when, I, when my eyes are drawn to the 6th of January, National Shortbread Day, you know, that takes the biscuit. You know, gosh, that was an epiphany for me. So you're thinking about, I you know, the, the National Cheese Lovers in the US. Gosh, doesn't it great on you? So, you know, you're thinking about what's ahead of you in, in January. The, these days, you know, dry January, January, I say January, veganary. Now, you can argue some of these are maybe slightly tenuous, some are more significant. Chocolate, can't wait for chocolate cake. Yeah. But joking aside, we know what's coming up, and next year is a big year. There's so many different events or <laughs> planned, I hope so. But thinking that you may want to look at your own calendar of what events that are likely to happen even for your own business you may be anniversaries there may be things that are taking place and it's so much easier to put campaigns if you're mapping them out okay so worthwhile having a little google calendar coming up with things now how your marketing drive the desired action well Number one thing, and this is often where I encounter a lot of businesses don't always hit the mark. You must have a call to action. What do you want the person to do? When they're receiving the campaign that you're likely to put forward. Here, I share a couple of examples worth Googling it on purple.com. Try the purple mattress for up to 100 nights. If you don't, if you don't love it, we'll pick it up for free. You're clicking to learn more. Very simple stuff. A, a lovely little video there with, with a, a, someone building a, 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 um, a tower of cards and the, their partner gets on the bed and the, the, the cards don't fall over. So it shows you the, the, the benefit of the mattress about getting a good night's sleep. But again, very simple call to action. An example from Starbucks, and you'll see it on a lot of social media campaigns. Welcome to the ice match, I can say, green tea latte, and you have to swipe up. That's, that's a, a, a thing that you see all the time. You, you're making it very easy for the audience. In effect, no pun intended, but to spoon feed them. Make it very clear. It's interesting with websites, 
a lot of uh, uh, businesses don't always have a visible call to action on the website. You have to go hunting for it. I strongly recommend you make it very easy for people as if, as if he seamlessly moves on to this particular website. Manly goods when you need them. Men's underwear, socks, razors, condoms and more. Build a man pack. Hunt, thousands of men are already signed up. There's humor in there. There's you know, the great image, but it's front, front of house there. Thinking about that website there, obviously it's a commercial you know, site, so it's not necessarily for information, but there, build a man pack. It's a gr it great call to action. So the, the two second test on it, as I always talk about on websites, you think about that and think about maybe your own site. Now, what's Simon doing here showing this? Landing is the, uh, landing was the uh, contrived rep code. What a great film, Saving Private Ryan. Anyone ever get a chance to go, if you haven't done so, going to the Normandy beaches, well worth it. Fantastic to go to see there, uh, to see both where, the, where the, some of the residue of what's left behind, but also the moving cemeteries. And probably the most thing I remember most from going there was the ages of the fallen. There we go. So quick side issue. So what we're talking about, landing. Well, if you're going to run campaigns, think about having landing pages. So if you're running a, 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 a social media campaign, you want to click through to a dedicated landing page. So here, if you want to become Airbnb as an example, twice I mentioned them today, earn money as an Airbnb host. So rather than, rather than the customer clicking through to the front page, click through to a dedicated landing page. And here, TransferWise, another fantastic landing page, a cheaper way to send money internationally. You're clicking through from something to where they want to be. You don't want your customers to be going on a rabbit run around your website. So having a dedicated landing page is a great thing, a necessity to do to make sure your campaigns work as best. Now, we're going to come through all sorts of different campaigns. I want to talk, I've shown this before, and this will be the fulcrum of our activity for a quarter of an hour. So paid, owned, earned. Paid, owned, earned. Really, in effect, it's a marketing model. The thinking and the theory is that to reach general consumers or strangers, you have to pay money. So you, traditional advertising, radio, whatever it might be, you're usually making an investment for your customers, the people who you own. You've got the website, you've got, you've got databases, you've got your community, you've got the mobile numbers, whatever it might be, you own them. And then there are people who call fans or advocates that may be following you on Facebook, but there's no transaction taking place between you and them. So the thinking is that you will make, if you want to, 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 to target with your campaigns, strangers, consumers, you may have to crack open the piggy bank. Alternatively, if you want to talk to your fans, you want them to be, to be coming customers from fans. This is a bit I'll talk about. So paid spending money, own largely is free and earned a lot of it is also free. So paid media. First thing I would think about here, if you're going to spend a small amount of money, is to think that you, the, only, the best way is, is social media advertising. There is probably no more effective, efficient, affordable method of advertising through social media than to use Facebook ads. Facebook, as you well know, has got fantastic algorithms in place so you can target very specific audiences that are there based on their interests. So think very carefully about Facebook ads. You can run things, adverts for a very nominal amount of money and you get fantastic insights. So if you're gonna run stuff, social media advertising, Facebook is a great place to go if your audience is there. 
The second thing I'm thinking about from potentially paid media, although it may wrap over to earned, is the idea of influencer marketing. So you may have 200 followers yourself, but you would probably want to reach somebody who's got 200,000 or 20,000 or 2,000 influencers. Here is a good example from National Geographic, you know, uh, and they're here, the, the photographer and marine biologist, and they're referencing him, talking about being a photographer on assignment. So you've got 600,000 people have seen this through National Geographic, but the, it's the photographer who may also reap the benefit. So you're thinking really carefully about who can be an influencer for you. We all have them, it's just tapping into them. So one of the easiest, quickest things to do is look on your Twitter, who's got the most followers? Look on your Instagram, who's got the followers? You can find this kind of information out. Alternatively, you can actually look for them. And you know, if you, some of you may be working with charities, corporate social responsibility. Well, if you're tagging them into your posts, they may retweet, repost, like, and share things. So the likes of your charities will be a good place to go. Or just look on a Google search. Here's an example. You know, if you're into organic food, you can just look for organizations that are in your world. So hopefully you can find influencers and engage with them. Also, you can search a simple search for bloggers. So here's a you know, an example from the states where you're just looking for food bloggers if you're in that world so sometimes just doing very simple google searches will bring you bloggers influencers and they're the people you can engage with if you can get them to share or even you pay for them to post on your behalf you've got yourself very inexpensive paid campaigns one thing that again is also in, in, in paid media is the likes of using pay per click. As you can see, you know, clearly that, um, that you can run ads in this particular example. So sometimes pay per click, but there's, as I mentioned in previous webinars, there's a two to one ratio in terms of investment and return. Here is straight from my Google My Business page. That there's an advert, there's a free 80 pounds. Google are offering me 80 pounds free to, to use for Google My Business. So I'm just gonna have to ask to mute the microphones. If everyone could just mute the microphones, it'd be really helpful. Thank you. Um, so look upon using Google My Business and to, to think about maybe taking advantage of some of the offerings that Google are giving. So now, that was paid. Thinking very carefully about your owned media. You, now, the starting point is for to look down your customer listing. Have you got a database? Have you got all the email addresses? Have you given people the option to unsubscribe? So creating a database for your owned media. So going through some issues relating to owned media, you can just run social media posts to your fans as well as to your customers. I've said numerous times, video is where the biggest part of engagement with, we've seen it with LinkedIn stories, Instagram reels, etc. Often signposted that the, the, the biggest level of engagement for video is on YouTube, still the second biggest search engine. Great place to go if you're doing a lot of how-to type videos and i always go back using social media very much for the visuals you've got a, a, a beer beer bottle beer business there and a dog and you've got a fantastic image and you've got a summer image and it's just being creative being engaging think really carefully about you know I'm not just going to using animals gratuitously, but creating images, creating emotional engagement with your social media. So we've covered social media a lot in previous webinars. We only cover it very swiftly today. 
Now, so we move on to talk about content for your own media and content marketing. A few tips here, always to think when you're writing and producing content is just to write with your audience in mind. Always have a visual element. The use of infographics still remain really powerful. As you can see in this type of situation, it's got a heavy slide, but a lot of it rating to export. But here you can use Canva again. There's also Picto Chart and Vengage. If you're trying to portray an image that's best in a visual, then the likes of infographics are a very clever, powerful way of doing that. Again, a lot of these tools to use are free. So what, you know, the old classic, a picture tells a thousand words. So infographics, a great way to use. Also, you might wish to think about graphs and charts in your content. <laughs> Here's a fantastic one <laughs> from the veterinary animal world about the effort and fun relating to dogs. Uh, so to, to dogs, relating to animals. <laughs> so effort and fun. You're right, you know, with dragons and the right then babies. You can see there's humor in here, but again, it, it resonates with hopefully audience. So just think about things like that that may be applicable to your world. Just creating these fun, engaging infographics as well as charts in terms of campaigns. Now, the other thing, I've always said this, that when there's so much noise out there and you're creating content, is probably to think about taking a calculated risk. Now, the National Enquirer, for those of you who are visitors of states who have seen it, you can see, and I won't intend to, to, to read that, the headlines are notorious for their um, sensationalism. But, as I said often about um, using newspapers as a good guideline, great headlines create interest, and it depends how much risk you're willing to take. Also, to think you can be far more conservative and create posts that are based on actually talking to your customers and getting tips from industry specialists. It's another way of great creating engagement. Or to create opt-in lists. So there are two very powerful ways in which you can create content. Top 10 lists, top 10 tips, etc. Industry experts, great way of creating engaging content. And if you are creating content, I think that there's plenty of places to go in which to guest post. So again, looking at blogs, searching for those where you can actually create your content and put it somewhere else. And you can just do it in simple ways like this. Here, believe it or not, a product relating to ice cream, just doing a very simple Google search. It will tell you all about the alternative places and where there's information, where there's opportunity. And you can see it leads you down different pathways and just by using the Google search bar. Content is naturally an open door to so many different things. But you can teach an old dog new tricks. So there's lots of things out there where, there's, where you've, information's been created and it's been unused. So one man's throwaway data is another man's success story. So you could go to various different places, like on the screen there, data, the census, UNICEF, World Health, wherever it may be, studies in your sector, industry magazines that may, and find information, user generated content that you can repackage, share, do all sorts of different things. And so if you're creating that, you're seen as an industry expert. So people like Kevin, who's on the call, all the stuff relating to, to Chinese trade and things like that. There's lots of places to go to give people information and for you to create great content on the back of that. So the message there is that don't bin me, recycle it. Lots of stuff out there that can be repackaged to your benefit. Now, if you are creating a blog post, you can use it in so many different ways. 
first thing you do is by put it on your website you'll put it across your social media platforms or just take simple some paragraphs from it put it little bits in there you can guest post it or further down the line you can repurpose it you can use it in lots of different ways so for example you create an article it can go onto linkedin go onto facebook it can go onto twitter it can go onto your company page on linkedin it goes so many different places to go so by creating good blog content it can it can get far greater reach by just using it systematically and obviously always put it on google my business so the other thing to always think about is your own media always worth visiting your website copy as well to see if it's actually in keeping i've always I've often said that when you look at some of the things happening now a lot of people have got images of crowds and social things that aren't in keeping social distancing so you might wish to think about your copy as well so email is probably the, one of the best ways of uh, on um using email marketing i'm going to whiz through some examples about running email campaigns give me i did share this one yesterday but a great one to use that is a gif on an email campaign and there's humor in there very much relating to um restaurants and funny kind of uh, campaign going out there but it's getting away from the bland here information going out by email are electronic signatures safe so you're giving out it's all about data privacy here's mint talking about credit scores spring is coming so you can get a new credit score here's an organization sign up genius are offering it's in the it's in the autumn now we're coming into the winter here you can new signups there's new designs for social distancing you're offering clients an incentive visuals before and after in email campaigns upgrade customer is using product a you might want to offer them product b a great place to go using email campaigns to get your clients to conduct surveys survey monkey and all the others that are out there so email campaigns for that emails your audience here for covid rated questions tax was a scenario here but many of you will be able to update your clients on that footing i love this one from twitter people are talking about you on twitter so they're actually uh, giving you email there talking about you trying to encourage you to be more active in that area so there's an element of curiosity people are talking about you so that's the way about using owned media for email marketing but not quite quickly a little bit more to cover one thing i would really recommend if you want to run probably the most effective campaign you can do is to give a customer a ring Woo! for the millennials who are a little bit apprehensive about using the phone if you targeted yourself to ring one customer a day proactively to talk to them to engage with them not just to ring up and have a chat but think about the objective of the call or the goal of the call you'd be surprised having a conversation with a customer is still probably the most best form of marketing campaign anybody can run now using your clients to refer you to others campaigns can run on that footing worthwhile having a little check of the likes of some of the biggest brands out there paypal uber airbnb dropbox i'll give you some examples about seeking referrals verizon it pays to have friends literally what a fantastic tagline there refer your friends to verizon and get a rewards card they get an offer as well so it's a win 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 i think you may want to run campaigns on that basis a lot of it's quite common e-commerce true here give friends 15 dollars 
and get 15 start sharing referral marketing is still very powerful and it can run both the consumer which is largely where its home is but also from a business perspective and here those of you who are using dropbox as a, a cloud-based repository for uh, they are you get an additional space if you invite friends to dropbox again great way all you have to do is put an email in and they start using it fantastic way of doing it and again just invite people to get free styling but you can see the message is different i'm sharing my link with and so it's very personalized so i think it's very simple look how many words are on the screen there so you don't have to say much but the message is very clear so it's email marketing to your client base to seek a referral we're going to conclude today hopefully with some inspired examples of marketing campaigns take from this what you will but just to summarize paid owned earned is a good way of looking at where you may have to spend or not and you're thinking back to where we began about the goal for your audience how you're going to measure it and a target and i'm just going to give you some examples here of some campaigns i thought were quite inspired well how about writing <laughs> very old-fashioned old school no less writing on the pavement you'd be surprised stopping people in the street you know so different ways of doing things writing on the pavement you've seen that often in major sporting events tour de france is a great example but think about actually creating street art how about go it is actually not from, how about creating a mural how about that the house of cheese now not everyone's going to be banksy but murals some very clever creative ways of you know look how many traffic may come past that particular sign my favorite absolute creativity need a new barbecue <laughs> call to action using the grill on the road using a tool how about that as a clever way of marketing a business so many people might just walk along see that take a photograph it i know what some of you think they might nick that book but there's different ways to do it, but how clever is that and again you'll see if it works or not because you got a call to action I've done this one before but if you're going to run uh, subscriptions of your website just you know sign up for occasional emails so it's the family it's the principle so you, you're trying to encourage people to come to you so you can just run simple things on your website it's very very inclusive now you pay your money and he takes your chance but that's a plumber and he's uh, as a way of using guerrilla marketing as a campaign in using the livery on their van some people find that humorous some people less but it's very memorable if you remember that but forget all those who didn't take a calculated risk. Signage. Very familiar with the exit sign, but there is an organization, Axe Deodorants, late image of a lady's chasing men. Very sort of uh, controversial, you could argue, maybe not PC, but memorable well twice i've mentioned condoms street art guerrilla marketing very a little humor in there as well different ways of cutting it so street art things like always obviously we've moved on in terms of social distancing stuff but how many you see it even then there's lots of signposting on the streets relating to certain things so you may wish to take a leaf out of that book Great example of a towel manufacturer that's trying to uh, provide insight into skin cancer. So they've got towel in a particular shape. Again, very memorable. Again, you're just thinking about slight product 
adaptation, you know, a, a suggestive image, but again, very clever campaigns that can run. Here, back to the classic days of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, by just putting a surprise element associated in a product. Kids buy an ice cream, they eat that, and then there's a prize at the end of it. Very simple stuff, but gosh, look how much content and campaign could come out of that. Very simple one here not is a, is a is a pub using uh, working with a supplier partner to put, using it from a signage perspective in inexpensive guerrilla marketing campaigns tip as well that you may that ever anyone checked out h a r o haro help a report out free press coverage great site to go to to get your campaigns into the world. Often journalists are looking for stories. Why not register with them? And you may wish to push a story in their lap. Help a reporter out. The other way of thinking about things is often to look for classic partnerships. Are there companies you can work with? So you may find that we moved on a the slide there. So you may look. Oops, come back. Is that you think about people you can work alongside? Butch and Sundance work effectively, but there may be organisations you can partner with. So people who may be complementary, much back into way of influencer marketing. So we've come to that time of day where we hopefully give you lots of tips there in terms of some campaigns that have worked and methodology behind that. So without further ado, we have come to the end. Tea time. You will get a copy of the slides and I will take questions. And next week is our final one. We're going to be talking about all the things relating to what you can do from a marketing perspective before and during. Looking about spring cleaning of and all the things to do for your marketing around this time of year and to plan ahead for 2021. So I'm going to stop sharing and for the next few minutes I will take I will look down the chat line and see what questions have cropped up. Let's kill it off. Right. Let's have a here. <laughs> Tony has said I've never thought about writing Christmas cracker jokes. Uh, well, yeah. It's too modest to add to that. <laughs> Hopefully, you find they find them slightly amusing. That's the main thing. Actually, yeah. So there we are. Re Sal, remember, graphic information cannot be read or understood by people with VI. It's a good point. So you need other way of creating the same information with low sight. Great point. So take that on board. So also mention about that. Sal's mentioned about Dropbox, which should increase this. <laughs> so about that. And oh, next week, our final is next Wednesday, Wednesday the 16th. For those of you, I'll be putting my Christmas Christmas jumper on as well. And there will be some, there will, uh, you know, can't disappoint the audience, a few Christmas cracker jokes as well. And all things Christmas. So has anybody got any questions? If not, you're welcome. So thank you, Claire. Thank you, Tony. I hope you've enjoyed it. So, so paid, owned, earned, goals, targets, taking a calculated risk, measuring success, seeing what works out there would be the tips I could use. Think about the campaigns that you've been enjoyed receiving and often would be poacher as well as gamekeeper. Well, If there are no further questions, I bid you farewell. Sorry, Simon. Oops, this, oh, got some. Oh, yep. Only, sorry, I put in the thing. Is there a Tuesday as well as a Wednesday? No, or just. Tuesday? It's just a, right. Just, it's like the Radio Times. It's a double edition next week, so it'll be on Wednesday. And then a, hi, so, then a winter hiatus back in January. <laughs> Thank you.
So without further ado, I'll bid everyone a, a safe afternoon and hopefully see you next week.